Do you know how your personal information is kept safe when you're online? As an internet user, we all access various www URLs over the internet. And I'm sure you would have noticed that URL starts with HTTPS. We may have heard that there is a security certificate involved, but what is their purpose? What problem do they solve? And more importantly, how do they work? This is what we're going to cover in this video. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to explore the fascinating world of SSL or secure socket layer and understand how it keeps our online conversations safe and secure. So sit tight and let's dive in. Back in the early days of internet, messages were passed between clients and server without any security measure in place. This was done using HTTP or hypertext transfer protocol. It was like sending postcard through the mail Anyone could read the contents as they travel across the internet, right? Now imagine sending personal stuff like passwords or credit card details through HTTP. It's like shouting your secrets in a crowded room. Not only we do lots of online shopping, banking and even chatting with friends that happens online today. But with this convenience comes a risk. Hackers. These digital ninjas can potentially intercept your messages and read them like a book. Not cool, right? That's where things get interesting. And that calls in for a quest for a secure con communication. As you can see, your messages are being read by the hacker because they are the digital hacker ninja on this website and they are able to see every single message that goes between you and your server. The first attempt to secure communication was use, like using a secret code but with a twist. You and your friend would both share a single key to scramble the message. This key would act like a lock and only someone with a matching key could unlock or decrypt the message. It seemed like a clever solution, right? In short, we can use encryption. Think of it like putting a message in a lock box before sending it. But the sender and the receiver have the same key to lock and unlock the box. This is called symmetric key encryption. But there's a problem with this method. Imagine you're sending the key and sharing the key with someone. It's like passing a secret node in a crowded classroom. It's like a sneaky student can intercept the node and they can read all of your secret. Well, the problem lies in sharing the key itself, not the message, because your message is locked. After you lock the messages, now you have to pass the key, right? So you, you, have, the, you have the client here who is passing the locked messages, which cannot be read by anyone, neither the hacker nor your server because server too would need the, a copy of that key. The problem is when you share the key. As soon as you share the key, the hacker who may be listening in will get a copy of the key, correct? So now at this point of time, when serve server is going to ask you, hey, can you now give me the, give me the key and you're going to send the key Hacker can also make a copy of the key and will have a, a key to himself. So now all of your messages that you're sending to your server are read by the hacker as well. So even if you manage to share the, share the keys securely, it is still not secure. So how do you solve this pro problem? Because hacker is not able to read all of your messages. So at this point of time, a hacker, this is a good hacker, okay? partially ethical hacker I would say who is actually sending the forwarding your messages after reading them back to the server but not all of them are, are same right so how do we solve this problem so this is where enter the asymmetric key encryption it's like having two keys a public key and a private key the public key is like a mailbox where anyone can drop a message but only the person with the private key can open the mailbox and read the messages inside here the server generates a pair of key, a public key for encryption and a private key for decryption. The client who wants to send the private message asks the server to provide its public key so that the client can lock his own public key in the envelope so that the server can get the client's public key by opening this envelope with his own private key. If you see the blue, the blue key which you are seeing right at the other end, with that key he is going to open the message that client has sent as a part of a one-way lock box. The hacker cannot open this message as it is locked and he doesn't have the private key to open that. 
or can they? So it appears that client and server are happy at this point as they can share their secret message and hackers cannot access this message. But hackers are always a step ahead and they have another trick up their sleeves. Hacker soon realizes that client will trust to lock their public key to unencrypt their message as long as server public key is asymmetric. That means they are not paying attention or verifying that the public key that they are using is actually a public key of the server. They are using this vulnerability to break this asymmetric encryption of messages which may seemingly be foolproof way of sending the messages, right? And this is where they employ another tool called man in the middle attack where they pretend to be the server. And what they do over here is they too are going to generate a copy of their own public and private key. And when a client says, hey, I need your uh, public key, this hacker pretends to be the server and sends their own public key. And the client now locks the messages thinking that it is locking the mess locking the key using the server public key sends it to the hacker. So hacker can now open the messages with his own private key, opens up the message, it has the public key of the client and now reads the messages and can either dump it or again lock it with the with his own public key and pass it back to the server. A good hacker, right? They are at least passing your messages back again. But that may not be the case. The point I'm trying to make is they have access to all of your messages now because they also have a copy of your key, right? This is where certificate authority like CA or Let's Encrypt or Wildcard can help you solve this problem. So client, client and server comes to know that the, uh, the, the decoy or the ploy that hacker is using. The server goes to certificate authority and asks them to verify their public key. Think of this certificate issued by the certificate authority as digital ID for websites. When a server wants to prove its identity, it gets a certificate from the trusted SSL provider like CA authority or Let's Encrypt. This certificate contains important information like website name, public key and a digital signature from the SSL provider. It's like having a seal of approval from the trusted authority. And of course, these website, the certificate authority website, they provide this certificate for a fee. Let's Encrypt is one encryption where you can use the, you, you can create a certificate for free. But most of them charge you a small fee. Certificate authority asks the server to provide its domain name because before it creates a certificate, it needs some information from the person who is asking to asking them to create a certificate for them. So it is going to ask for the domain name and the server public key. The certificate authority then verifies the key and the domain name. After the verification, the certificate provider signs the certificate using their own public key. By own public key means the certificate provider public key and they create a unique signature. The server now has certificate on its own website along with the public key. And now this can be used to solve this problem because at this point of time, when the client asks for a public key from the server, client also gets a certificate from the server. Before the client lock his public key using server's public key, the client asks certificate provider to verify the authenticity of the server public key. Certificate authority like CE or Let's Encrypt verifies from their own system of record that the signature matches and confirm that the key that they have received from the server is authentic. Now the client is verified and goes ahead and locks the key using the server public key to exchange the key and pass messages securely. So if you want to see how the certificate looks like, you can go on any website of your choice as long as it is uh, HTTPS, you can click on the settings and for example here I'm seeing it says connection is secure. Let's see who has signed this certificate and how long is this certificate valid and what the signature looks like. Okay, so I'm going to click over here and still it says certificate is valid. I click on this and this is how the uh, certificate issued by a certificate authority looks like. So this one has been issued by Microsoft Azure TLS issuing CA05. 
and you can see it was it was issued on August 11 2023 and expires on June 27 2024 and this is the uh, certificate digital signature how it looks like this is the public key of the uh, certificate authority so this is this certificate that my browser sent to Microsoft Azure and asked that is this website certificate msn.com certificate is this certificate valid and it confirm yes the certificate is valid and the public key that you're using is safe to use so if something has to be sent like for example if i go and log into msn.com i'll be passing my username and password right so now i can use the public key of the msn.com send my public key and say this is the public key which you can unlock the message that I'm going to send and I'm going to encrypt that with the public key of msn.com and send it to msn server right, where it is going to verify whether my username and password is valid or not. So this is how the whole, whole uh, system works of how the certificates are verified, how the certificates are exchanged, how the public key of a client is sent to the server and before sending, how do we lock with one-way encryption using asymmetric, using the public key of msn.com. Now, one question that may be itching in your mind is, why can't we create our own certificate and not pay anyone? Why do you have to pay this small fee? You can certainly do that using OpenSSL tool. But however, hacker may do the same and create a private cert because client will have no way of verifying this private certificate. Who are they going to take the certificate to? because this has been created by the hacker or may have been created by the server itself. There you have it, that's how SSL magic works to keep our online conversion safe and secure. As I was messaging, saying you earlier that if you want to learn more about how internet works and want to stay safe online, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. And thanks for watching and see you next time.